What is going on, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. On today's episode, we sit down and have a conversation with Nate Hinton, the Houston Cougar who is testing the NBA draft waters now. Uh, we go through his career. We go through his unique style. We go through what he's doing to prepare for the NBA process. Um, very exciting talk. Very, uh, very eager for you guys to listen to this. Before we get into it, though, we have the normal ask. If you would, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. Um, also, if you enjoyed the interview, uh, feel free to share it across your personal platforms as well. We want everybody to hear everything that Nate has to say. Um, get that thing going because he's, he's a great young man and, and, and did a great job with this uh, conversation. But without further ado, here is Houston Cougars' Nate Hinton on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. What is up, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here with the Absolute Basketball Experience. I am here with Houston Cougar. Nate Hinton, who recently put his name in for the NBA draft, working out and everything. Nate, how you doing today? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, big topic on the on the uh, on the everybody's mind. The Jordan documentary the other night. Did you get a chance to yeah, watch yes, it? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, I did. Yes, sir. What uh, What were your initial thoughts? Michael's a bad boy. I tell you that <laughs> <laughs> for I, sure. Yeah. I tell you, who came across who was bad was a uh, Scottie Pippen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's definitely uh, definitely one of those guys that I definitely want to play on his team any day. I ain't know yeah, he was, that was he crazy. The specifics of his game like that, but I, I didn't. I know that he's he's a problem. Yeah, I I didn't know he was like that. Like like he showed in that that uh, documentary. I was like, God dang, Pippen was a bad dude. <laughs> right. Uh, jumping right into things here. Um, your dad's a a, a pastor of a big church in your hometown, Gastonia, uh, Doctor Hinton. What was it like? growing up and how did that mold you into who you are today? Um, dealing with the people and people business. Um, you know, my dad taught me how to stay with high character and, and conduct everything in an in a orderly fashion and do everything uh, the right way. And that's the main thing of, of everything that I do, just trying to do the right things and, and going about it the right way. So my father, he's a high character person. So that, I got those genes. And he, he speaks well. He's a great speaker. So uh, in some ways, I can speak well as well. So uh, it, it's a great charisma. You know, when he gets on that stage. He's when he gets on that platform and start doing what he does. Um, he he's the, he shows his great confidence and great poise. And no matter the crowd, whether it's one person in there uh, or is it a thousand, so um, just having that that genuine love for what exactly doing what exactly what he does. You had a great high school career, um, over two thousand points, all this stuff. But you didn't really blow up until the Adidas Gauntlet finale in between your junior and senior year, and then things got hectic for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you got stuff from all over the place. You got a top 100 ranking and all that. What was that time frame like for you? My first initial uh, reaction was I was excited. I was geeked. I was. I had just my body. It was kind of like an out of body experience. Um, but then when you settle down and, and think about everything that was happening, it was kind of a testament of the hard work, and dedication and putting the time in the gym. Because, uh, you know, that top 100 ranking was, was, was built from the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. You know, it was supposed to be ninth grade, uh, had a ranking, this and that. But it was uh, it never manifested itself till the, the gym, my the senior year, ultimately. Uh, so having to work and seeing other guys kind of get theirs early and get there get their shine and get their mixtapes and get their camp invites and all that. And, uh, you know, I didn't really have a, a whole lot of camp of the national camp invites of uh, per se, uh, you know, the top 100 camps or the, mm -hmm. the just any, any camp really, I, I didn't really go to those type camps. So I didn't really have one of big time mixtape guy. And I just had to really put my uh, blind, my racehorse blinders on and, and kind of go to work. And, and, and at KOD with coach Jody, we just really just got in the gym and really worked. So we knew that it was my last year last time playing AAU and so I just really tried to go out there with a bang and and I just kind of just just went out there and did my thing and just hoped and competed and, and went out there and be a winner. Yeah, absolutely and y'all made it all the way to the championship game of the Adidas Gauntlet that year um, and you picked up probably 20 to 25 offers that weekend if not more most right. of them high major and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You ended up landing on Houston. Right. What was it about Houston that really set them apart from everybody else and, and made you feel like home? Just the family atmosphere. You know, a lot of I was getting a lot of love from the, you know, ACC, some players close, close to home and some some programs that were, I guess, bigger programs. But I decided to, I had a feeling that 
that Houston was where I needed to be. Uh, I knew that I needed to take my game to the next level in situations such as this. Uh, I knew that if I wanted to become the man that I uh, needed to be for the future, I knew I had to go to, to Houston and play for Coach Sampson. And, you know, his ties of being from North Carolina, and I see that they was doing great things, and they were on the verge of becoming um, what they are now and are becoming. Um, I knew that I could ultimately bring a lot to their table and they could help me and we could be a mutual uh, relationship. And so I just knew that this that was exactly where I needed to be. And, and you got on campus at Houston, really good team, won a lot of games, probably one of the top 25, 30 programs in the country. Mm -hmm. um, you started your third game of your career there. Right. What was it like when the coach told you that you were going to start? And what was your feeling that you had going through that, you know, the third game of, of your career that you were starting? Um, my, my reaction was just, that was just a testament to the hard work. Um, you know, I had a, some struggles there when I got on campus. Um, just some things I had to get to adjust, adjust to. Um, it wasn't no internal struggles, but it was just, uh, just adjusting to the next level and adjusting to the culture of the program and kind of seeing what they do and, and adjusting, taking what I bring to the table and to adjusting to theirs and kind of molding and things like that. But, um, just, just kind of understand the system and once you grasp the system um it doesn't take long for some players uh, long to adjust to it and, and and thrive in it and so um just having that experience uh, having the confidence that coach knows that coach is doing well for me and coaches is actually trusting me to to go out there and play so that, so that was a, a big part of it yeah absolutely and i think every every high school kid adjusts to college right. basketball yes. playing or not right, there, right. there's an adjustment there um in high school, you scored 2,200 career points. In college, though, you have kind of set your mark on defensive and rebounding. Right. How would you describe your game? Um, I kind of – I want to be a winner. And so uh, me kind of being in a system where uh, you're playing with better players, you're playing um, in a system where everything is surrounded by winning. And so, you know, in terms of my player development, I, I just wanted to – kind of, you know, do whatever the, the team needed me to do. And I, uh, and I was asked, I had a lot on my plate, and, and the coaches, they put a lot on my plate, you know, in terms of what was expected of me. And so I just went out there and did what I was expected to do. And so I didn't get away from who I am. You know, I still still became the player that I am, but a lot of things were just uh, based on, on what I was expected to do. And so um, just my game, my game is really, you know, I've always been able to rebound. I've always been able to defend. I've always been able to score. But my game is just kind of, uh, anything that you need me to do, the, the dirty work, the, the grimy, the mm -hmm. anything, get on the floor for loose balls, you know, just the intangibles that I bring to the game, my instincts on defense, and all, all those things that, that matter, you know, fall in love with the mid-range, things like that, you know, being able to knock down an open shot, and being able to be dependable, because, uh, you know, in this game, in this game, um, it's, a, it's a business, it's a game of basketball, just being dependable and, and being able to do your job and do it well. So speaking of, you know, knocking down open shots and all that kind of stuff, your three-point percentage jumped to 39% this year, and right. your attempts rose to 3.8 per game. Was your three-point shooting a focus of yours during the offseason and then development and all that stuff? It was. It was. I, I wanted to. I knew the shots that I was uh, getting, going to get. And I knew the spacing of the floor because, um, you know, coming from high school, uh, you know, I had a ball in my hands. And so um, when I went to college, some things got moving around where I had to play, learn how to play uh, without the ball. And so um, just being an adjustment and, and always um, elevating your game and changing your game and molding it. And so uh, having to play without the ball, knowing what kind of, time of shots I was going to get, um, knowing what type of the spacing on the floor. I knew that, okay, the flow of the game, okay, where I would get my shots. And I knew just ultimately playing experience, the more you experience things, the more times you'll become better at it. And, and so, kind of putting my head down and working and working on those shots and, and kind of working on my technique and, and just kind of being consistent because I know I wanted to be the type of player where Coach knew if the ball gets swung that it, it ultimately goes in every single time or, or has a chance to go in every single time with my shot prep and everything. And I knew that it was also translate to the next level. Looking at your kind of analytics and how you had played this season, you're one of only two players in the country along with Caleb Wesson who played over 900 minutes, shot over 38% from three, while having a box plus minus greater than 10 and a defensive wow. rating less than 90. Wow. What type of player do you see yourself becoming at the next level getting into the NBA? A winner. A winner. Just that type of player that's, that's just being who, exactly who I am. Just being that type of player that's, 
that's willing to go the extra mile, that's going to be the hardest worker on your team, that's going to be a great leader, a great teammate, a great uh, a great heart and soul of the team, a great vocal leader, a great person that can you can put on the posters, you can put on the billboards, you can go, um, you know, ask them to do uh, per, uh, public appearances, and, and I have no problem doing that. So, you know, just being that overall player of just – being being a dog and being that that top tier guy of being the hardest worker hardest working player on the court. We're in quarantine right now, going through the coronavirus and all that kind of stuff. What does your day to day look like, and how are you handling this process? Well, I'm, I'm in the gym working. Um, you know, we we're not really slowing down, or we're not really trying to taking no step backs. So, you know, my father has is blessed to have a, a, a court, a gym at his church. So, you know, I, you know, obviously I have access to that and, you know, we're getting a little weight lifting in and just in the gym working. So, you know, when, when me and coach Jody are at KOD, we get in the gym, we, we, uh, we make magic. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. Just steady working and being prepared because we don't know what's going to happen. We just got to be ready and you got to stay ready versus get ready. Who was your favorite player growing up? Favorite player was Kobe. Kobe Bryant, uh, just that that his swagger, his demeanor, just his mentality, um, just mid-range, his body frames, similar, just his body, overall body of work of how he just wasn't always, I guess, growing up. He, you know, he had some struggles growing up in terms of the of development to the player that he is. And then when he got to the league, just kind of he just rose and kept working and working and working until ultimately and he rest in peace to the player he is, he was. Who have you said? Who would you say that you play like, and who who have you heard that you compare to, kind of at the next level? Um, you know, you hear a lot of, of people that you compare to, but I I really um, players like Jimmy Butler, some mm -hmm. of those guys that that kind of hard workers that did never really was those top guys. Those those are stories I can relate to. You know, not being one of those top guys or not being those guys that had it made or going coming up in the game of basketball, but just those guys that had to put their head down and really work. And, and ultimately that work is going to be consistent. That, that work is going to um, ultimately be the same. They're not going to be no, no other type of player. And so at the end of the day, I really want to be the best version of myself that I can be because I know that, you know, I'm a, I'm a different type of player of uh, everything that I bring to the table from the offensive side to the defensive side of being a complete player. I, I know that it's, it's unmatched and I, I haven't seen it. I've seen similar uh, things of, you know, bits and pieces from, from here and there, but I haven't seen the type player that I am. As this process continues to go on, I believe these uh, NBA, they're able to go through more film of you. They're able to see how complete your game really was. It wasn't necessarily just rebounding and toughness. You know, you're, sure. you're showing skill and stuff, and they're able to see that. And you continually rise up draft boards, draft charts, you know, top 100 rank, what, you know, all that type of stuff. What type of feedback have you heard so far uh, from the NBA teams and all that stuff about where you're projecting and, and what it's looking like? Right. Yeah. All great. All great feedback is all feedback is great feedback. You know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just um, I'm enjoying this process and and hearing what they're what they're telling me and and just trying to take it with a grain of salt and, and keep moving and, and just try to keep working and stay ready because you know when those if they have the time to have those workouts or whatever, um, just trying to be ready. So you know. I'm just excited for this journey, excited to uh, hear from the NBA because I would have never thought that I had would have this opportunity. I just kind of just put my head down to work. So, You have a unique ability to rebound the ball as a wing. You, you went over double figures 11 times this season. Your per 40 average was 11 and a half uh, per game. Mm -hmm. where, where did you develop this unique ability from? Um, I, I've always been able to, to rebound the ball. You know, uh, <laughs> it's my heart. It's my heart, my passion. Um, you know, I've always found ways to get on the court, uh, whether that be from ninth grade to playing all up on a different teams. I've always been able to be on the court. And a lot of times, some other guards were ball dominant that I played with. Um, I've found ways that, you know, they're going to be ball dominant. Well, I'm not going to force the issue and have two dominant or three dominant ball handlers. I'm just going to go ahead. I right, you got the ball, you got the ball, but when the ball goes shot, it's 50-50. It's, it's Anybody can go get it. So I'm going to get it, make opportunities for myself. And, and ultimately, my hunger, my, my drive to be a go-getter, that, that's what it comes down to. You know, just not waiting around. Some people got to wait around for your opportunity to try to go create the opportunity, but you got to go take it. So that's ultimately what rebounding is. Just got to go go get the, the balls coming off the glass, go get it, and make a, go make plays. As you dive more into the tape here, 
uh, throughout your college, you see that you've consistently been able to knock down mid-range jump shots. You've consistently been able to make the right reads. You've been consistently able to touch the paint off the bounce, um, you know, get past your man on the first step, even though you're not a primary creator. How do you see your offensive game translating at the next level? Um, that's exactly it. Being able to, to open, knock down the open shot, being able to get to the mid-range and the, the three-point line is, is going to be more spacing. So you're going to be able to operate more. You're going to be able to, to create more lanes. That more people are going to have to rotate longer. And so I just know that, you know, just be able to knock down the open shot, be able to get to your mid-range and be able to create. So that's just – I know that's going to translate. And you got to – the basics of basketball is the same. You know, at every level it's the same. You got to rebound, defend, and knock down shots. And so ultimately with more spacing, there's going to be more opportunity and a faster pace and more athletes and more competition. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a competitive spirit. So um, competition brings the best out. So the more you play against the best of the best, the top of the world, literally, you play against, you know, superstars every single night. So I just know that you have to be on your top, top of your game. And in going through this process, you're looking for information to gather as to decide to go back to Houston or to go to the NBA draft. What information would you find or be looking for that would keep you in the draft? I'm not getting into that information right now. No, I'm just, just going to go from there. Absolutely. Um, so you're listed at six, uh, six, five, two, ten. Have you gone through any combine testing lately? Um, and, and what numbers, you know, vert vertical and size, weight, all that stuff, length. Have you gone through that lately? And wh what did you come out with? Uh, I haven't gotten into that, but uh, we're going we're gonna to do that. We work on that every day, really, uh, you know, working on your intangible things like that. But we'll, we'll get into that as we get more into preparation and preparing for the uh, – the, the league and things like that. We, we don't know if there's, there's, there's probably not going to be a combine. So mm -hmm. um, we're still going to be able to um, kind of get that work in and kind of show it on film yeah. of what I can do. But uh, I haven't started on that yet. We're just kind of trying to get back, get my body and get my, my game back to the basics of everything um, and trying to get back to really uh, who I am and be able to handle with the ball and being able to just kind of get back in, the, in my mode and my work mode. And so just keep, keep grinding. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we like to kind of end everything here with kind of a rapid fire, a couple uh, quick questions to, uh, you know, first thing that pops in your mind, whatever the answer is. Mm -hmm. If you could hang out with any cartoon character, who would it be? Jerry. <laughs> if yeah, you could yeah. kill any fashion trend that's going on right now, what fashion trend would that be? The tights with a little scrunch at the bottom. I ain't got nothing against it because I know somebody that makes them, but I, I just don't understand the whole process of how that works. I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't go scratch at the bottom. I don't, I don't get that. So maybe, maybe I gotta maybe I gotta be woke to it, but I don't know right now. And if you could eat only one meal forever, what would that meal be? Lemon pepper wings. Lemon pepper wings with a little mac and cheese. Have a little lettuce on the side, you know, a little salad for the healthy. Yeah. And a little lemonade with the water. Oh, I like it. I like it. That's a good one. Uh, anything else that you'd like to say, Houston fans, NBA people watching, or anybody, any Nate Hinton fans, anything else that you'd like to add? Um, Houston Cougars, you know, it's all love. I love you guys. Houston Cougars for life, um, no matter what. Um, to the Houston Cougars basketball family, it's Houston Cougars for life, uh, family for life. And the NBA, any NBA teams, you know, you, you got to get a winner. Um, the winner, the hard work, the hardest working player that you've ever seen. or and you know, I'm just ready to work and, and excited for this journey. Excited to uh, take this next step. That's awesome. Nate, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I really no appreciate problem. it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. For Nate Hinton, I'm Jamie Shaw on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you guys very much. And there you have it, our conversation with Houston Cougar wing Nate Hinton as he ventures into declaring for the NBA draft and going through that process and, and making decisions and, and all that moving forward. Uh, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and if you enjoyed the conversation, please feel free to share it across your platforms as well. Um, in the comments below, we want to hear who you have going number one in the NBA draft. Who is your number one pick? Is it Edwards? Is it Wiseman? Is it Ball? It could be somebody else. You let us know in the comments who's your number one pick. Until next time, I'm Jamie Shaw on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you very much for tuning in.